live from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Okay, welcome back everyone, this is theCUBE. We're here in San Francisco live, wrapping up our third day of coverage at NetApp, I mean at Red Hat Summit 2018. I'm John Furrier, great, day, great event. And here, special guest appearance as our closing analyst. I've been here all week with John Troyer, he had to leave early to get down to San Jose. John Troyer is the co-founder of Tech Reckoning, which is an advisory and community development firm. And, and in his place, we have Keith Norby, who's the senior manager at NetApp, doing dis business development, um, DevOps Pro, former Solid Fire, really at the heart of the part of the NetApp that's transforming. Here is my guest analyst. Welcome, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming in and, and sharing your knowledge. Uh, and to wrap up the show, really a lot going on. So, and, and I know you've been super busy. You had a, a appreciation event last night with NetApp. You had customers there. Um, but I really wanted you to come on and help me wrap up the show because you're also at the kernel of DevOps, right? We're DevOps and storage. Uh, we were talking last night about the role of storage but that's just an indication of what's going on across the board of all resources. Invisible infrastructure is the new normal, and that is what people want. They want it to be invisible, but they want it highly performant, they want it scalable. Uh, so roles are changing, industries are changing, uh, application development is changing. Everything is changing with cloud scale at an unprecedented level, and Red Hat is at the center of it with the kernel Linux operating system. It's all about the OS. Yeah. That's my takeaway from the show. What's your, what's your takeaway, what's your uh, analysis here of Red Hat Summit? Well, first off, you know, 7,000 people is a heck of a, a lot of growth, and in, in, the, in some of the birthplaces of VMworld, we, we have the, 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 the new birthplace of, of Open being real, and, and Red Hat's been the, really the, the, the true company that's taken Open and done something with it. What's the big, uh, most important story for you here this week? What's the, what jumps out at you that jumps off the page and says, wow, that's happening, this is real, obviously open source, going yeah. to a whole nother level. That, the cat's been out of the bag for a while on that, but really it's just about the exponential growth of open source. Linux Foundation's Jim Zemlin talks about this all the time. So okay, that's not to me the most important, so that's just reality. Yeah. But what's jumped off the page for you here? I think they said it best in one of the keynotes where they went from this being a concept of cheap to a concept of being functional or capable. So it's the C to C transition of cheap to capable and it is about trying to unlock the capabilities of what, the, what this show delivers, not just on Red Hat's platform, but across the ecosystem. And as you see that play out in any one technology sector, you know, we've been talking DevOps, um, which I think has been an, a, pheno a phenomenal study in and of itself, saying you know, we've gone from a lot of thought leadership, a lot of, uh, if you go to DevOps Enterprise Days, they'll talk a lot about culture and, 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 and operational things, to now seeing a, a maturation in, in the industry to actually have you know, some very specific capabilities and customer maturity models. I think the thing that jumped out for me, Keith, I want to get your reaction to it, is, is that DevOps ethos, which has been around for a while, not a while, a, long, you know, a couple years, eight years maybe, since cloud really native really kicked in, but the ethos of open source, the ethos of DevOps, infrastructure as code, is not just for software development anymore, because as um, the things that are catalyzing around digital transformation with Kubernetes becoming a de facto standard, with the role of containers, yep. with serverless and all this infrastructure being programmable, the application market is about to go through a massive renaissance. And you're seeing those changes re uh, uh, rendered in the workplace. Yep. So the DevOps and open source ethos is going everywhere, it's not just development, it's marketing, it's how people manage their business, it's a workforce structure, you're seeing blockchain and decentralized applications on the horizon. This new wave is not just about DevOps for infrastructure as code, it's the world as code, it's business as code, yeah. it's everything as code, so the if you're doing anything with a waterfall, it's probably outdated. Yeah, everything, um, everything has its different pace and its cadence in, in, in different industries, and. And that's a hard thing to predict for everybody. Everybody that's coming here from uh, different walks and enterprises of life uh, is trying to figure out how to do this. And, and that permeates out into you know, vehicles and IoT edge devices, uh, back to the core part of the data centers and the cloud. And you've got to have answers for really the three parts of that equation in different modes and ultimately equal a business equation, a business transformation. What did you learn here? I'll, I'll tell you my, my learning, something that uh, wasn't obvious that I learned. Um, that's validated in my mind. And they didn't talk about it much on stage in Red Hat, maybe they do off the record, maybe it's confidential information, maybe it's not. But my observation is that the Red Hat opportunity is really global. 
and the global growth of Red Hat outside the United States and Europe yeah. is really where the action is. You look at Asia and third world countries with mobile penetration, the global growth for Red Hat and Linux is astronomical. I, to me, that clearly uh, came through when I squint through the puzzle pieces and say, okay, where's the growth coming from? Oh, certainly containers is going to be, Linux containers are yep. going to be bigger than RHEL, so that's going to be check on the financial results. That's good growth, but it's really outside the United States. I'm like, wow, this is really not just a North America <laughs> phenomenon. Yeah, and, and really demand is demand. And uh, at NetApp, we've seen this in APAC uh, almost more so than a lot of the other parts of the world. Uh, the, the pace of innovation and the demand for innovation you know, just kind of finds its way naturally into this market. You know, this, this whole community and open source approach, you know, sort of incubates a, a lot more innovation and the pace of the innovation, in my opinion, um, just by natural, um, by natural fellowship of these people. And, and the company's trying to innovate in the segment with these things. So what things. did you learn this week? What was something that you learned this week that you didn't know before, or you had a hunch, or you validated it here? What is something that's unique that you could share uh, that you've learned or validated or have an epiphany? Share some color commentary on the show. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of, uh, of industry maturation where, where this technology isn't just like a Linux thing and a, and a, a thing for infrastructure people trying to do you know, PaaS or container automation or something technical, but it's equating out to industry solutions, like uh, NFE and Telco is a great example, you know, where all of us want to get to a 5G phone, and the problem is, is that they've got to build a completely re reprogrammable, almost aut completely automated edge cloud um, type of network, and you can't do that with appliances, so they have to completely reprogram and build uh, a new global scale of autonomy on a platform. And, and it's, and it's awesome how like, complex and how uh, much technology is there, and what it really comes down to is us having a faster phone. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, it's amazing how you have all that and it equals something so simple that yeah. my 14-year-old daughter you know, can have a, have a new obsession with how fast the, the new phone is. I mean, it's just, it's just learning itself, digital transformation in all aspects. IoT Edge, you mentioned that, good stuff. I got to ask you while you're here while, uh, about NetApp, obviously SolidFire, great acquisition from NetApp. Um, some transformation going on within NetApp. What's going on there? You guys got a, a good vibe going on right now? Um, some good team recruiting, you guys recruit some great people, as well as the SolidFire yeah. folks. What's going on in NetApp? Well, yeah, I was part, part of the uh, SolidFire team and, and, and that was a great group of people to really see the, the birth of, of the next generation data center uh, through that lens of uh, the SolidFire team. As we've come to NetApp now, we've really seen that be able to be, be, able to be incubated into the family of NetApp really into three core missions, you know, modernizing data centers, uh, you know, with an all-flash uh, approach to the, the, the ONTAP and FAS uh, solution, taking the solid fire assets and really transforming that to the next level in the form of an HCI solution, you know, which is really to deliver simplicity uh, for various, various consumption of, uh, of, of economics and, and uh, agility of operations within an organization. And then, you know, having that technology also show up in the marketplace and Amazon and Azure, and this week we announced Google. So it's, it's been fun to see not just the, the solid fire thing come to life in its own mission, but how that starts to federate in this data fabric you know, across three different missions. And, and then what really gets exciting to me is how it applies into things that help people transform their business, like we talked DevOps, and unlocking that in some of the config automation with Ansible, unlocking it in some of the things with OpenShift that we're doing with uh, Trident and the container automation across three of our platforms. Uh, and then seeing how this also comes to life with other factors with code and artifactory management or CICD pipeline with Jenkins. Um, it's about tying this entire floor together in ways that makes it easy for people to mature and just get more agile. And it's a new growth of the ecosystem. Uh, we're seeing you know, some companies that try to get big venture back financing, trying to monetize something that's hard to do if you're not Linux. I mean, Linux is a free product. It's all about Linux of the operating system. Yeah. So Linux is the, is the enabler Absolutely. to all this, and whoever can configure it in a way that's horizontally scalable, yep. asynchronous and with microservices architecture, yeah. wins the cloud game, because the cloud game is just now creating clear visibility, the role that open source plays, being open. I mean, look at the role of the hypervisor. Yep. Closed and proprietary, harder to innovate in a silo, 
Yep. If you're open, the innovation's collective, collective intelligence. And, and I thought that one of the keynote demos uh, on, on day one, Tuesday morning, to me was one of the more powerful ones where they showed uh, a, a, a VM environment being transformed into container automation. Like a, literally a SQL environment being on into a container-based environment from previously being in a VM environment. And, and traditional IT doesn't have to do a whole lot of heavy lifting there. You know, people want that ability to kind of inch into it and then, and then transform at their own uh, time scale. And I think the big takeaway for me here in the show to kind of wrap things up is Red Hat has an opportunity to leapfrog the competition in a way that's not a, uh, a lone wolf kind of approach. It's like they're doing it with the collective, uh, the whole. The second yep. thing that jumps out at me, I think this is really game changing for um, the business side of it, is that because they're open with Linux and the way the ecosystem's evolving around cloud, the business issues that enterprises face, in my opinion, is really about how do I bring in the new capability okay, of cloud, cloud scale, and all the asynchronous new, new infrastructure and applications without killing the old. And containers and Kubernetes yeah. and OpenShift allow companies to slow roll the life cycle or let workloads either live and hang around or kind of move out on yeah. their own timetable. So you get the benefits of lift and shift with containers without killing the existing old ways yeah. while bringing in new innovation. This to me is an absolute game changer. I think it's going to accelerate the adoption to cloud yep. and it's a win-win. Absolutely. Transform agility. Cool, well Keith, thanks for coming on. Any final thoughts from yourself here on the show? Uh, observations, anecdotes, stories? <laughs> you know, sometimes less is more, and, and this show has, um, you know, in, in a lot of ways both gotten more complex, but I would argue also much more simple and clear about directional paths that organizations can take. Um, and that is working backwards from cloud. What, what cloud is teaching the rest of us is that both, you know, functions more so than technology, uh, and agility in terms of the ability to consume at the pace of, of the business. Uh, those two things are the ways to take all this complexity and simplify it down into a couple of core statements. Someone asked me uh, last night um, um, what I thought about the current situation in the industry, and I don't get, get your response to this and get your reaction. I said, if a company is not making tweaks to their business, they're probably not positioned for success. Meaning, with all the new things that have developed just in the past 12 to 18 months, yeah. if they're not tweaking something in, in some material meaningful way, not, like re, not completely replatformizing or changing a business model, a tweak, whether it's to their marketing or their tech or whatever, then they're probably st stuck. And what I mean by that is, is that new things have happened in the past 18 months that are moving the, the needle on what the future holds. And to me, that's a tell sign when someone says, are, is someone doing well? Yep. I just look at them. Well, they were kind of doing the same thing they did 18 months ago. They really aren't really, they're talking a game, but they're not changing anything. Yeah. So if they're not changing anything, it's probably broken. Your thoughts? Yeah, it, it, was, it was best said in terms of you look at the, uh, the Fortune 100 right now and, and, and contrast that with you know, 10 or 15 years ago, and it's a different landscape. And projecting that out another even five years, the rate of acceleration on this is, is a brutal scale. And so any, any company that's not thinking through transformation, you know, it, my kids are the future consumers. Yeah. You know, they, they grew up as digital natives. You know, we're all migrants. <laughs> and they just automatically assume all these things are going to be there for them in, in their rhetoric, in their, in their rationale. And, and the current companies of today have got to figure that out. You know, and if they don't start now, you know, they might be out of business in five years. If you're standing still, you're going to, you get rolled over, it's my opinion. Cube coverage here, of course, wrapping up our show here at Red Hat Summit 2018. We've been in the open all, day, all week here in the middle of the floor at Moscone West in San Francisco live for the past three days. All the footage on, on siliconangle.com is the articles on our, on our, from our reporting. Thecube.net is where all the videos will live. And check out wikibon.com for all the research. Um, Keith, thanks for being our guest analyst on the wrap. I appreciate it and congratulations on all your success at, as business development um, exec at NetApp and, and the Solifier nice. stuff. Great to come on. DevOps culture, going mainstream. Software is powering the world. This is the programmable world we live in, powered by Linux. Of course, theCUBE's there covering it. Thanks for watching, Red Hat 2018. We'll see you next show.